And but, hey, give the Lord a true praise. Come on, down. <clears throat> I believe it was the great John Wesley who said, I want to catch on fire with the Lord so that way the world can watch me burn. And I just wonder what would it look like if just this church or several churches in this community we get so on fire with the Lord where the community can look and say, you know what? They don't just attend church. They are the church. And I want what they have. Amen? Like, what would that look like? And that is my prayer. I'm so grateful that you're here. I don't know if you swam here today or rode a boat in, but I'm glad that you're here. Hey, I want to just give credit where credit is due. You saw an announcement that Morgan made about uh, training team. And there's so many different teams that just serve so selflessly week in and week out. But I just want to highlight the, the training team and even the worship team because they came and set up everything late or early yesterday morning. But this morning, when I wasn't sure the rapture was about to happen or not, but it was raining. But man, we had people meeting the trailer at 6.15. And then after that, of loading it up, they came here and unloaded everything. And it was pouring down rain. And they just did it like it was nothing. And so I just want to give it up for them for being so faithful. I don't know about you. I like hearing the music like this. And I like being able to send our kids back there. And if it wasn't for them, man, we would be in trouble. So I'm just very, very grateful for not just them, but all of our servers. Brendan kicked off our brand new series last week called Grow and did a phenomenal job. Uh, and I hope that as you hear God use so many different communicators and preachers of the gospel and that it can help you realize that God has a word for each and every person. It doesn't mean that we're all called to be teachers, but I do believe that we're all called to be preachers with our lives. Amen? I really believe that. So Brennan did a great job, and uh, he just asked if I would tell you guys that he did a great job. That way he would feel good. And so, no, man, proud of him. did a phenomenal job. In this series, we're looking at how it's time to grow up spiritually. Look at your neighbor and say, it's time to grow up. You're like, bro, I'm not saying that to my spouse. We drove in here this morning, not the right time. I think we can all agree it's time for all of us to continue to grow up spiritually. If you think that there's no room for you to grow spiritually, I would say pride is a good area to start. We all got to continue to, to grow. And James tells us in 1, 4, let it grow so when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. And so if you're not a Bible person, like, if you don't believe in the Bible, or if you are a Bible person, but maybe you don't read the Bible very consistently, or maybe you do, I'm just asking, in this month, the month of June, since we're going through the book of James, read the book of James. It's probably my favorite book in the Bible, because James just tells it how it is. He's a straight shooter. He just wants you to know, if you want to grow in your relationship with God, this is how you do it. And so, Brendan shared last week about trials. And today we're going to get into what it means to have faith and, and, and how deeds or good works follow that. And so with that in mind, James chapter 2, verses 14, I'm going to go through verse 20. It says this, What good is it, dear brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but don't show it by your actions? Can that kind of faith save anyone? Suppose you see a brother or sister who has no food or clothing and you say, Goodbye and have a good day. Stay warm and eat well. But when you don't give that person any food or clothing, what good does that do? Verse 17. So you see, faith by itself isn't enough unless it produces good deeds. It is dead and it is useless. Now some might argue, well, some people have faith and others have good deeds. But I say, how can you show me your faith if you don't have good deeds? I will show you my faith by my good deeds. You say you have faith, for you believe that there is one God. Good for you. Even the demons believe this. And they tremble in terror. How foolish. Can't you see that faith without good deeds is useless? Somebody might have a whole lot of faith. But not very much many actions that follow. And if that's the case, it's an apple. On the other hand, somebody might have a whole lot of good deeds and, and, and actions that they do a lot, but there's no faith. And that is inadequate. 
to be the church that we're called to be and to be the Christians that we are called to be, we need both faith and deeds. Would you agree? Father, we come into prayer. We thank you for who you are. I thank you for this church. God, I pray your blessing be upon this service today. We need you, Lord, and I pray that you move in a mighty way. We love you. I pray this in your name. Everyone said, amen. You may be seated. Glad that you're here. You ever met somebody that had a whole lot of faith, but were committed to their actions to bring their faith into actions, right? Somebody that has a whole lot of faith, but not willing to actually take their faith and run with it. I was a youth pastor for about two and a half years, loved it, thought I'd be doing that until I died or Jesus came back. Uh, man, can we just give it up for our youth and what God's doing for you? We're grateful for that. That's a plug for Teen Camp. Teen Camp is coming up, and so parents, that's like a free vacation for you. Get your te teens there. But there was one particular student that I had when I was in Kansas, that I, I really resonated with. I loved him. He, he came from a very troubled background as well, and I was just trying to encourage him, help him out spiritually, but I knew that there were life experiences that he didn't have that most kids had. There were certain things that mom and dad didn't instill within him that he didn't have, so I tried to do whatever I could to help him. And anytime there was a teaching point, in a, in a humble way, I would try to help him say, hey man, you need to kind of look into this. And so he was in junior high when I first got there, and then by the end, he was um, about a sophomore uh, going into his junior year. Like, it's the, it's the time where, you, you know, you're starting to think, like, what's next? Not where you have your whole life figured out, but hey, are you thinking about college? Are you thinking about getting a job? Like, what does that look like? I said, hey, Rick, I said, so man, like, I know you got some time, but have you given any thought about what's next after school? He said, yeah. He said, he said I got to figure it out. I said, sweet. I said, you, you mind sharing you know, with me what that's going to be? I'm going to play in the NFL for the Oakland Raiders. And so I was sitting there a little bit discombobulated. I said, Rick, I said, um, I just got to ask, because I know you don't play football now. When's the last time you played football? He said, man, mighty minds. I said, brother, I hate to tell you this. You better have the greatest mighty might film there's ever been in order for you to get drafted to go to the NFL, or you ain't going there. And what's crazy enough, today, he is a starting middle linebacker for the Oakland Run joke, and that's a lie. <laughs> I was sitting there and said, bro, you want to go to the NFL, which is so hard you can't imagine we're the best of the best. Can't make it. But you ain't play football. I know A ain't the right word there, but you, you don't play football. But you want to go to the NFL. Yeah. I said, have you ever thought about playing football in high school? I haven't thought about that. I said, well, let's talk about that. Now, I had a whole lot of equity with Rick, and I helped him, and, and God's still working on him. I love him. I, I pray that, that uh, he continues to grow in the Lord. But as I say that, it doesn't take long for you to go, are you for real? Like, that's crazy. Like, you think you're just going to randomly be in the NFL after there's all these people who put in all the work, devoted all the time, and still don't make it. That is crazy. It takes a whole lot of faith. But Rick, your actions aren't supporting your faith. And I'm here to tell you today, spiritually speaking, while it might seem hard for you to, to understand how the connection to that story might connect to your spiritual story, it's not far off. Many people, especially in the Bible Belt, you ask them, who is the most important person in your life? Easy. God and God alone. Jesus Christ. Love the answer. I agree. I'm just curious, what's God speaking to you about? I don't know, man. Well, what's the word speaking to you about? Man, I'm busy. I don't got time for that. Okay? What's your prayer life look like? Man, I just pray a little bit before I eat. God, I pray that you nourish this fried chicken to my body. In Jesus' name, amen. Not a bad prayer. But my point is, sometimes we're like Rick when it comes to our faith. God, I want to be so close to you. Let this be the year that I'm closer to you than ever before. But yet, I'm going to hit or miss church whenever it's convenient for me. God, I, I would love to get in your word, but I don't really understand it. I don't have much time. So you're going to just really have to speak to me when the preacher preaches or something else. God, I, I know I need to speak to you, but it's just foreign to me. 
me. It's like I'm talking to a ghost almost, not the Holy Ghost, but, but you know, just something else. So it's just kind of hard. And I'm not being condescending, but I'm telling you, can you see the irony of that statement just like Ricky's statement? Church, I'm here to tell you to grow spiritually. We need not only faith, we need the actions to support our faith. Can I get an amen, somebody? God, I want you. God, I need you. I'm, ba I'm banking on you. I want my life to be put upon you. And I'm, I'm not here to condemn anyone because I'm still growing. My faith is still growing. I need more of God. But I, I've been doing this long enough to know if I want more of Jesus, Jesus needs more of me. As Maddie shared the, the scripture and, and talking about the song, it's a beautiful song. I love that song. If you think of those words, that's a bold song. Some of you walk in for the first time today, you start reading that song, those lyrics that song, you're like, ah, I don't know about that. Refine me, God. Show me. As David said, search me. Show me if there's anything that is offensive to you. And when God begins to reveal himself to us, we have got to begin to not only have faith, but put our actions to work. So today, I want to preach a message called, You Can't Have One Without the Other. Say it with me, please. You can't have one without the other. There's certain things in life, man, you just can't have that without that, right? Like, some of you, some of you guys, God bless you, like, I can't have a, even no, no matter how cold the drink is, I can't have just a drink without ice. Any, any of y'all just admit no ice? People raise your hand. We'll pray for you after service, Okay. I know you're going to say that it's melted and watered down. I got to have it some cold. Lukewarm coffee, I don't get it. Like, there's some things you can't have one without the other. And the same spiritually, you cannot have faith without deeds. It requires both. And that's what James, James was telling us. He's making sure that we understand that we have both. Because if we have one without the other, it, it's dangerous. And let me, let me teach you why it's dangerous. If we have an overemphasis on works, good deeds, whatever it is that you want to, to insert there, here's what can happen. We can develop a rules, a regulation, a legalism, and, and, and religious type mindset. Like our, our walk with God is based upon what we are doing for God rather than being with God. And I need you to know that the premise of Christianity is being with God, not doing for God. Other religions you have to do in order to attain God. But what's amazing is God came to us before we went to him. That's really good news. That in our brokenness, he was still seeking us. God loves us. And so maybe you grew up in a hellfire brimstone church. Maybe you grew up in a very rules-based church. I want you to know that it is grace through faith that we are saved. Is anybody thankful that salvation is that free? Wasn't free for Jesus, but it was free for us. But the problem is, many people know that Jesus saves them, but they base their life completely on these on the works. And so, if I do enough, then God is happy with me. Did you know that before Jesus did any miracle on the earth, the Father says, "This is my Son, who I am well pleased." When he was getting baptized. Now, he did leave heaven to come to earth, so that's a video. But I'm just saying, no miracle, he says, that's my son, who I'm well pleased. I need you to hear this. If you didn't grow up in a home where affirmation was freely given, maybe you're still there. Maybe people aren't telling you your worth. Maybe you only feel good when, when, when you do this. Maybe even now you're still trying to, to fill that dad wound or mom wound. You make more money you ever have, but yet you feel more empty. Nobody's telling you you're, you're doing a, a good job. Your spouse is not telling you that you're, you're handsome or, or you're pretty, whatever it might be. Can I just tell you, you have a father who's not just in heaven, but he's given you his spirit who's saying, I want you to know you are enough. If we don't feel like we are enough, we have to constantly do in order to attain. And guess who can struggle with that? This guy. If I do enough, if the church is this, if, if I preach enough, if I get this opportunity, then surely now God or other people will 
Well, it's happening on the nub, but if you live for the approval of others, you'll die by the absence of it. So we come to the Lord and say, God, I'm so thankful that I'm enough. I had a, a pastor, mentor, text me this morning. Listen, hey, just want you to know I'm proud of you and I love you. And if you're a man, and I feel like this can apply to women as well, you're older, you're like, oh, thanks, I appreciate it. We're not going to, thank you. That's just what I needed today. But if I'm being honest, deep down within me, I have a family, I have kids of my own, I pay bills, been responsible for a while. Can I just tell you deep down, the little boy in me is so grateful that I have God and I have others say, hey, I'm proud of you. No, what does that have anything to do with faith? Because if, before we look at faith, if you're not careful, you will live your entire faith journey trying to earn approval from God that's already been given. So, what about faith? How can faith be a bad thing? Well, it'll be up on the screen, but an overemphasis on faith or hyper-spirituality, some scholars like to say, is this. It's an attempt to put your identity in your standing with God and vibrance, vibrancy of your spiritual experiences. Let me word it like this. It's, faith is very real to you. The fact that you have faith in God is great. There's a lot of worldviews out there. A lot of people, they're spiritual, right? I got a lot of lost friends. They're like, Dylan, you don't get it. I am very spiritual. I'm like, oh, believe me, I know. They're like, I see things. They go, oh, I know. But we're talking not just an intellectual belief about God. We're talking about an intimate relationship with God. Can anybody testify here this morning? You don't just have intellectual belief about God, but you know Him. He is in your heart. That's what we're talking about there. But the issue with faith comes to this, where you over-spiritualize everything. Now, I need you to know this. I don't have time to break it down. Study this a lot in school. We treat God in, in, in life as their Sacred and, and secular. Like Sunday morning is sacred. Whatever else you want to fit in that bubble, Bible study, life group, serving, that is sacred. But then there's there's the secular. You can kind of go to the gym. You can go to the sports games. You can do all these things. And God doesn't really care about that. I'm here to tell you, man, it's not sacred or, or secular. I believe that it's all sacred. And that as we are going about and doing our daily things, going to our jobs, going to the ball games, whatever it might be, that God is there with us as well. I need you to know that. I believe that. But the issue comes when everything is so spiritual to you that you can no longer trust God at his word. Where you are still looking for a sign in heaven. As Jesus performed miracle after miracle, the people continue to demand more miracles. And he says, I will not give you any more miracles. Do what I've asked you to do. And you'll know me. If God doesn't do another miracle, can we all agree his word is enough? And so many of us, we don't want to, to live by this. We don't want this in here. So we're chasing faith. We're chasing spirituality. We'll listen to the internet prophets. We'll listen to, to these people and these people and these people. We're looking for a sign from heaven. And God is saying, just don't pay me. You'll get to the drive through at Chick-fil-A, wherever. And you're like, I really think God wants me to order a number two. No, you like a number two. That's Chick-fil-A. I think that's a spicy looks. I could be wrong. Thank you. I knew this was God's church. You were at the right place today. Close on Sundays, though. Listen. There is nothing wrong with seeking the supernatural, but if we are not careful, we will over-spiritualize everything, and we will not do anything unless we feel like God is, has shown up in such a supernatural way. Can I tell you, most likely you will look back on your life and you will have a few hyper-spiritual moments, but you will have, I mean, thousands of daily opportunities to obey God and put your faith in Him even when you don't see it all. If you hear me say yes, that's what I'm getting at. And 
my gosh, I just want you to know if I've offended anybody, I'm sorry. I am deeply, so, <laughs> I was going to say I'm deeply spiritual. That sounds like Moses said, I'm the most humble person on earth, right? Like, I deeply believe in the faith aspect. I, I deeply believe in the supernatural. I deeply believe that God can use people. But I'm just here to tell you, we need to rely on God's word more than man's word in the supernatural time. And that's what he says. So you see, excuse me, so you see, faith itself isn't enough unless it produces good deeds. Faith must produce good deeds, or what, Dylan? Or it's dead and useless. You can have faith on your own, but if it doesn't produce deeds, it's useless. But I thought you said I am saved. Grace through faith, not deeds. You are correct. Deeds follow faith. You are saved through faith. But as you put your faith in God, you will naturally want to do the things of God. And I want you to just do an evaluation right now. Rhetorically speaking, evaluate your life. You're here today either seeking God or you know God, and that's a big deal. If you're not a believer, I'm telling you, I'm so glad that you're here. This is such a big deal. If you are a believer, I'm so glad that you're here. It's such a big deal. But can I tell you, we need to continue to grow rather than be stagnant. As Brittany was sharing last week with trials, if, if every trial is the greatest trial in your life and it stunts your growth, you're not growing. And in the same way, if you continue to say, yes, I put my faith in God. Yes, I believe that he is the most important thing in my life. But if there are no deeds to follow, if you are not doing anything with that faith, you're not growing. That's what he says. Continues on. Verse 14. What good is it, dear brothers and sisters, that you say you have faith but don't show it by your actions? Can that faith save anyone? So some have faith and some have actions, they think, but I want to camp out very quickly on this idea of faith and deeds. Theologically, 5,000 square foot view. Faith is not just something that you believe that God is real. It's not just, God, I believe this can happen. I think this summarizes the majority of Bible-believing excuse me, Bible Belt believing Christians. Where they believe, not only intellectually, but theologically, that God is creator and sustainer of all things. But when it comes to relationship with God, when it comes to knowing him as father, when it comes to, to knowing that he has a plan and a purpose for you, he knew you before your mama knew you, that then he was the Alpha and the Omega in the beginning, the end, he's so big but yet so personal, we will never realize that faith always brings us into the presence of a loving Father. And when you understand that idea of faith, it begins to help you ask the question, so God, if I believe that you're the creator and sustainer of all things, if I believe that you love me and you're for me and you're not against me, then the natural question is, God, what are you wanting to do in and through me? That's the question that you need to ask you this morning. God, how are you using my time, my talents, and my treasures to follow you? God, how, how can I be used by you more and more? God, what, what does it look like if I begin to treat my job as not just a job, but as a place to go and reflect your, your, your goodness to people. God, how can I go pump my gas and bless somebody? God, what does it look like to, to go to the gym, go into the coffee shop, go to the gas station and just be used by God? Dylan, are you doing that? I am. I've missed it a lot. I got chickened out at Taco Bell the other day of inviting somebody to church. I'm a pastor. Like, we should be past this by now, Dylan. Like, are you kidding me? God, help me. There, there's times where, God, I don't know how you're going to show up. And he's like, are you kidding me? Have you seen what I've done in and through you before? Have you seen how I've provided for you financially? Have you seen how I've provided for you with your family? Are you kidding me? And you don't think that I can do this? 
Sorry. You ever been there before, just me? Faith and deeds. God, I want to continue to have this faith that you are a father and then that you can do anything, but I want to have the belief that, God, sometimes I need to do the right thing. Went to the gas station, and you know you're getting older because gas stations are amazing. Normally, Maddie just... You know, we have the two kids in the back, and so she stays in the, the car, and I come out like 10, 15 minutes later because I'm going to always have to go pee really quick because I'm always drinking water and coffee. And this time, though, she went with me, went to the restroom. And we were in Springfield, and I went to the, like, bougiest gas station, if you can even say that. And I'm looking at all the different water bottles, you know, looking at the, how purified they are. What does that look like? Man, buy two. Anybody like that? Just me? Okay, I'm going to keep going. And I'm looking. And, and so I got my drinks and I got my, 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 my bar and I walk in, you know, I walk out to the car and Maddie was with me to see all this. She goes, now I know. I said, know what? Now I know why it takes you 20 minutes to go into the gas station every time. See, I go into the gas station looking at all this stuff of what water I'm going to get and what bar I'm going to get. So important. Remember, it's all sacred to God. And I get to the counter, and I know this woman's having a hard day. But I'm like, God, I need these electrolytes. I haven't been feeling good. I'm hungry. She doesn't want to talk. I, I just know and go and listen. Hey, how you doing? I'm not that good. I said, how come? Blink, 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 blink. And man, and I'm embarrassed to admit this. Everything within me wanted to leave. I've invited them to church. And I just said, and I started to say, I will pray for you. But I made a, a pact with God a long time ago. I will not say I will pray for you because I won't unless I write it down. So I pray with people right on the spot. Some people love it. Some people hate it. And she's holding my hand. And I said, I would love to pray for you right now. I said, okay. So I pray with her. And I would love to tell you that she gave her heart to Jesus. I would love to tell you it's just crazy, crazy, supernatural moment. No. But when I left, I looked back, and she held my hand for a little bit. She just kept looking. And it was in that moment, Jesus was telling me, Dylan, you can spend 15, 20 minutes looking at the dumbest thing. I'm sorry, Lord. Or everywhere you go, you can say, God, how are you wanting to test my faith and how are my actions going to follow my faith? Are you with me this morning? If I tracked you on Life360 like your spouse tracks you, if you don't know what that is, look into it. If I tracked you this past week and everywhere you went, I think we can all agree, unless you're just a creeper a little bit, like, like only you went where you went all throughout that week. Some of you were on vacation. Some of you went to go see family and friends. Some of you, it was, it was a normal week. My question is, as you went through all those different places this past week, did you ever once ask the question, God, how are you testing my faith right now? Did you ask the question, God, how are you wanting to put my deeds into action? It's summertime, people are traveling, you might be getting on an airplane and you're praying, Lord, please don't put anybody beside me. And what if God has somebody sitting right beside you who needs to know Jesus? I could tell you a story. See, only you can be where you are at and only you can be you. Though I don't get out and about a lot, I stay at home. How can God use you behind the screen to reach out to people and let your faith and your deeds be stretched? What are you getting at? What I'm getting at is exactly what James said. Verse 17 and 16, suppose you see a brother or sister who has no food or clothing. And you say, goodbye and have a good day. Stay warm and eat well, but then you don't give that person any food or clothing. What good does it do? Is James suggesting 
that you need to give money to every single homeless person on the side of the road. I would say that's between you and the Lord. What he is getting at is when he says brothers and sisters, most likely referring to the church, but I think also when you look at the Good Samaritan and other principles that, that, that Jesus teaches on, that they're neighbors, those out and about, those you know, sometimes those you don't know, but a lot of times, it, let's just start with those that we know. He is asking the question, he is, he is getting us to examine if we who are faith people, so much faith, God is so good. I'm an intercessor. I, I fast. I pray. I serve. I tithe. I do everything. All really good things. But yet we see some people. Let's just use the church on Sunday morning. Let's start there. At a church our size. Do we look to our left and our right? Man, I know that she's going through that right now. I know that he's going through that right now. I know that's a bad situation. I, I, I know that their, their income is taking a hit. I know there's some health issues that are taking place in their life. And, and my question is, I'm not trying to be hateful. I'm just asking because I've missed it time and time again. Where I say, darn, that's a bad situation. I hate that for him. Let's pray. Do I believe that prayer is the most important thing? You better believe it. But do I believe that sometimes prayer can be the very thing that God is trying to use us to use to get our attention. Let me put it this way. Sometimes we are the answer to our own prayers. Is that heresy? No, it is not. Going back to this. What good is it if you see someone starving and freezing and you know them, a brother and sister, and say, hey, goodbye, have a good day, AKA, pray for you, see you later. We go home, and all is well, and our trials seem to be the biggest, and I'm not discounting them, but I'm just saying, we have a house to go to. We have cars to drive. We have food on our plates. We have clothes to wear. And sometimes there's those people to our left and right who don't have anybody speaking into them. They don't have enough to go by. And that is when I would say sometimes we are the very answer to the prayer that we just prayed that God would be with that person. If you're with me, say yes. I am not being condemning, I promise you. But I am telling you this, and I want you to ask this question for yourself. Like, does it bother you that people don't know Jesus Christ around you? Like, I'm, I'm serious, like, the call of evangelism upon my life to go out and tell other people is one thing, but like, when I get to go into the to the world, the country, and preach the word to people I don't know. Sometimes it's easier for me to give it my all, and, and God use me at the airport. God use me as I'm preaching at this revival. God use me there, and I go to a gas station and see a woman that I see every day, and I'm fixed on the bottle, and which one has the best deal, and what bar I'm gonna buy, and God's saying, Dylan, do you know her name? Will you hold her hand and pray for her, preacher? I care deeply about those who don't know Jesus, and I see so many church people who hear sermon after sermon and song after song, and they go, you got anything else? What do you think about giants? How old do you think the earth is? Do you think they're related? I don't know. I don't know. Let me go read some commentary. I don't know. What I do know is there's loss that need to be found. There's
is empty that need to be filled. And there's people who need to be set free. I'm not condemning Bible study. I'm not condemning people wanting knowledge. I'm saying there's people out there today that you're gonna go and be around and you're gonna go get a meal and you're gonna go pump gas and you're gonna get groceries and you're gonna do chores. And what I'm asking you is, the next time you're in that moment, what would happen if you said, God, would you increase my faith in this moment? God, is there a need that you want me to meet? Is there a young man that you want me to invest in who doesn't have a dad? Their mom's not here anymore. That is what I'm getting at. And I pray that you don't feel condemned. I, I pray that you feel encouraged. I pray that you feel challenged. But I'm just saying, this church is not just for the saved people, it's for the lost people. Jesus came not for the well, but for the sick. And church, I want as many sick people in here. I want as many broken people in here. So that way we have more Brendan's stories. That way there's more Dylan's stories. But guess what? That takes a whole lot of work. Are we willing to exercise our faith with our actions? Because I just want to be honest with you. I'm not interested in just growing a church numerically. I'm not interested in just critiquing sermons every week and, and having worship and all that's good. It's fine and dandy. You know what I'm concerned with? You know where this church is going and where this church has been and will continue to be to go out and reach those who need to know Jesus Christ. And if you sit there and say humbug and that doesn't interest you, you probably don't have faith or you don't have deeds, my friend. And don't let it be your son. Don't let it be your daughter to finally get a hold of you and wake you up. Our little girl turned three in April. I love her. She is, I mean, she likes mom better, but like she's my little girl. And since she was in her mama's womb, putting my hand on her tummy, and I said, God, I pray you use this little girl. I pray that you save her at a young age. God, I pray that she doesn't do what her dad did. God, I pray that that generational curse is broken. I pray, Lord, that, that, that she is a virgin. God, I, I pray, Lord Jesus, when she gets married, God, I pray that drugs and alcohol is never a part of her life. God, I pray that, that she marries a man who loves Jesus Christ. God, I, I pray that she knows that you are wanting to do something incredibly, immeasurably more than she could ever ask or imagine. God, would you use my little girl? Since before she was born, and almost every night we're praying, we're reading the Bible, and I've been open about this before. I would love to tell you that she sits there with her brother, and they say, hallelujah, amen, but instead they go, I'm thirsty. I'm hungry. I'm like, I don't even know. She goes to VBS, and right before VBS, she starts talking to mom. Is Jesus in here? Does he live in my heart? Is Jesus there, mama? Is Jesus here? And we're teaching our little baby girl what it means to follow Jesus. And there'll be a day where she has to put her faith in Jesus. Is it just the sermons that, that dad preached about Jesus and the songs that mom sang about Jesus? Or is Jesus in here? And so I'm like, yeah, okay, I think she's growing her faith. I'm not sure. And we start praying. And I'll be honest, it was like a 10-second prayer for me because I was really tired. And it's time for bed and I pray. And then she says, I pray. You pray, baby. I pray for mommy and daddy. And I pray for church, and, and I pray for, for Nene and Papa John and Nan and Pop. And I'm like, dang! Keep going, girl! Amen. I said amen. The other day, our little boy got some pretty bad rashes, and, and when I go to, you know, get the cream, and we're going to change his diaper, and, and do this, and she said, Jesus, we pray for Nana's butt right now. Amen. You're right. Should have prayed first. My bad. The next day, Nana wake up. Nana, you butt better. I prayed. I said, baby, I sure hope so. The faith of a child 
is beautiful. And what's sad is somewhere along the way, we get so responsible, we begin to look at faith and we roll our eyes. Or we have so much faith, but yet we're not willing to do anything about it. Here's where I end. Today's my, my birthday, and so if you wanna put that in your calendar, and my address is 1331, I'm joking. I bugged you with this before, I bug my staff with this all the time, but I have a five-year journal where I, each day I write where I'm at, so today's June 9th, and so I'm looking at what I wrote the years prior, I'm on year six. And I don't write it quite like this the same, but essentially after every year, I pray this. I say, Father, I pray that I know you more than I've ever known you before. In 14 years of following you, you've been such a good God, but God, I am seeing where I have just run a little bit, cal I've become a little bit callous. My faith isn't quite where it should be. My generosity can, can begin to go down sometimes. Man, just my, fill in the blank. God, would you give me more faith? And then I say, God, would you use my hands and feet and my mouth in ways that can only be you? Not my will be done, but Jesus' will be done. Amen. Very elementary, very youth groupy. I promise you we're done. I want you to stand. So youth groupy. Back in the day, you can't imagine. Jason, if you're still using this illustration, sorry. Maybe time for a new one. Look at your thumb. Look at your thumb. I want you to close your eyes. You've heard it before. There's only one imprint like yours. No one else is the same. Yada, yada, yada. But I just want you to hear this. I want you to think about your thumb. I want you to close your eyes. And I want you to hear this. Ephesians 2.10. For we... And I want you to change we for me. For I'm God's masterpiece. Who he has created us anew in Christ Jesus. So we can do good things he planned for us long ago. With eyes closed, I just want to speak this over you. God, there's so many different stories represented. A lot of amazing childhoods and a lot of hard ones and somewhere in between. A lot of homes where faith was instilled and actions and deeds were instilled and the lack thereof. But God, what I know is that there is eternity put in every side of every single person's heart here. But God, what I also know is there is a thumbprint on every person, whether they follow you or not. And God, you had them in mind before their mom even knew they were pregnant. And you say, that's my daughter, that's my son, who I have called for such a time as this, to be the age that they are, to be where they are at, no matter how tainted their past was, God, you, you, you will use it. And God, you are looking to put your thumbprint on this world through our thumbprint. And I am asking God that the church here this morning realizes you have given them the personality, the ability, the giftings, the positions, the families, the money, fill in the blank to glorify you with their friends and their friends and that job and that job. And so God, I pray today that we know to grow in you, we need faith and we need deeds. And it starts by coming down and surrendering or maybe where we're at and just surrendering. Here's my life, take it, 
My life is not my own. I don't want to go through gas stations and go to the gym or wherever I might go, go to the workplace and miss out on those you're wanting me to help. So God, here's my life. It's not my own. I want you to grow me. Grow my faith, God. Grow my faith to where I'm terrified of what you're calling me to do. I'm terrified of what might happen, but God, I'm even more terrified of what might not happen. God, give me the ability to step out in faith and have deeds today in Jesus' name. Amen. As we go into worship, the altars are open. You can stay where you're at. Whatever you do, I'm asking you, don't say the same. Chase God today in whatever way that you need to. Let's respond.